Welcome to Building the Premier Accounting Firm. This is Roger Connect, President of Universal Accounting Center, and I am your host. For more than 20 years, I've been working with accounting professionals to help them build their successful accounting, bookkeeping, and tax businesses. And in this process, have this podcast committed to actually helping you with the tips and tricks, speaking to the experts that you could use to literally market and sell your services with more confidence, to efficiently run your company more profitably, as well as have the mindset the confidence and competence to go out there and get paid what you're worth. So I encourage you to listen to our episodes and subscribe to this podcast to get the most out of this experience so that you can, in fact, work on your business and build the premier accounting firm in your area. Now, today we have an excellent guest. It is Ryan Lazanis, and he happens to be with Future Firm. So listen to this bio. This is very, very good. Ryan Lazanis happens to be a CPA, and he is the co-founder of Zen Accounting that was founded in 2013, 100% cloud-based accounting firm. And following the acquisition in 2018, Ryan started Future Firm, which actually helps firm owners design and implement online scalable firms that support their ideal lifestyles. He also sends out a weekly newsletter to more than 2,500 firm leaders that want and receive exclusive content and tips that can help them create an online scalable firm of their own. So Ryan, welcome to the show today. Thank you very much for having me, Roger. It's a pleasure. This is awesome. So obviously you've accomplished quite a few things here and I want to go back to the beginning to get some context for it. And let me just simply ask, what caused you to pick the career of becoming an accountant so much that you became a CPA? What what was that journey like as you started your career? Very good question. And actually, um, I blame it on my dad. Um, you know, he, um, he was a, a small business owner, ran a business, a print shop for several decades. And uh, I saw the ups and downs of business. Obviously, we know how print is going these days. And uh, he always kind of pushed me towards as, as at a young age, going into some kind of a, of a profession to have a fallback plan. I always knew I wanted to have a business of my own. Um, but having a fallback plan was really something that was a, a big thing for him. And, uh, you know, I really respect him or respect what he's done in life and took his advice and went into accounting because I felt it was the language of, um, of business. And I'll say right, right off the bat, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I was never passionate about accounting and I actually disliked <laughs> accounting quite a bit. And I think that really played out in how I started my first business, uh, Zen Accounting. So tell me about that then. How does that impact you starting your business back in 2013? So the idea was to, um, you know, as I was going through my CPA studies, uh, I had, I you know, I had to do training at an accounting firm and I worked there for about five, six years. And I really felt that, you know, again, I identified with the entrepreneur, the business owner, and I felt the pain that they would go through when dealing with their accountant, when, when dealing with their accounting. And I just found it a very manual, tedious, time consuming, painful process all the way through. And when I left that firm, um, I actually never thought I'd go back to public practice. I went into industry briefly. I only lasted a full six months there. It really didn't jive with my personality oh, and okay. um, decided to start a business. And, you know, I was in my, uh, you know, mid to late twenties, had no real other experience other than accounting. And that was my, where my training and education was. So I decided to kind of take my passion for entrepreneurialism and more disruptive business models and technology and combine it with my training and accounting to create a new kind of model in Canada, uh, which was an online firm, which was really designed to make accounting easier for small business owners and eliminate the typical pain points uh, that business owners would go through when dealing with their accountant and also their accounting. So the idea was really to kind of create like the anti-accounting firm to a certain extent and just focus on eliminating (laughs) pain points as much as possible. Now, you obviously called it Zen accounting. What does Zen mean to you? So Zen is really, um, Zen is really just a, it's a feeling, you know, a a feeling of peace of mind almost. And Mm -hmm. that was the Mm -hmm. feeling that I wanted to provide to business owners because I wanted them to have that feeling of Zen, that feeling of peace of mind, the feeling that things are easy for them, that there's an elimination of pain. Um, So there's a lot of pain associated with accounting for small business owners. And I wanted to eliminate that pain and make it easy. So that's kind of where Zen came from. 
All right. So I'm going to ask two questions. The first is, in Zen Accounting, what was unique about the experience that the customer had with you that you thought differentiated you from the other accounting firms in the area? Well, at the time, I was the only online accounting firm in Canada. There was one other. And, um, you know, there was no one else doing that at the time in 2013. So it was when I was even thinking about starting that model, I had a lot of CPAs coming up to me and saying, like, that's crazy. That idea is never going to work. Um, you know, meeting people online, using these cloud accounting tools, like QBO barely existed at that point. So uh -huh, I was, yep. you know, I, I had to move on to zero and adopted the zero platform. And, you know, uh -huh. my contacts were all in Australia and New Zealand. There was nothing in Canada built out here yet. Yes. And, yes. you know, so I was the only one doing it. So that's what made me different. And it was very, very easy to land a certain kind of client, which I learned very early on. There was a lot of people that were uncomfortable with meeting their accountant online and using these cloud-based tools. And that's where I found my niche in, you know, more millennial business owners who were primarily in the technology space. Yeah. So here's my second question. When you look back and you're starting the business, what was what were some of the challenges that you experienced that you didn't expect, but yet you had to conquer? The challenge was just um, not having any education or knowledge of business in general, um, not knowing how to hire people, not knowing how to manage people, have zero marketing experience, have very little accounting experience, and actually I'm a, a pretty bad accountant. So I had <laughs> no real good experience, and I didn't know how to put everything together. I had ideas in my head, but I made a lot of mistakes in those first few years, just kind of learning the ropes, understanding pricing, how do you even price your service, how do you then market it, how do you put a value proposition in place, like the real basics and foundation of business. I completely lacked and uh, I had to learn it. You know, I had to spend hundreds and hundreds of hours and, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of training and different types of resources until I finally was able to put a model in place that was totally online and scalable. Wow. Now, here's, here's something that I think all the listeners would appreciate is what advice would you give yourself? back in those early years of starting your business, what what would you say to yourself if you had a chance to kind of speak back? I mean, obviously it was worth it. So what would you say? I'd say start with the end in mind. Um, nice. You know, I started with just the idea of wanting to own a business and wanting, you know, I thought it was a fun idea and, you know, I would just kind of start it up and just go. And, you know, I look at my father, for instance, and he ran his business for, you know, from a young age all the way until he retired. And I just thought that's what you do with business. You just start one and you do it for the rest of your life. I didn't think about what my actual goals were. I didn't think about what I wanted out of life. I just thought about how I was going to help small business owners. And then mm -hmm. you just get into it and you get wrapped up into it. And then it's the never ending chase of growth. And sometimes yeah. that's not what people want out of their business, you know? So I never really thought about how the business would serve me. I just thought about growth. And that's one thing that's a big, that's, that's a big thing for me right now is when I'm talking to other firm owners or any other business owner, it's start with the end in mind. Where do you want to end up? To adequately yes. define that and then create a roadmap to get there. And it's amazing how so few accounting firm owners actually do that. I, I, I've, yet to almost meet any that that, that do that. I, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. So often when my conversations with accounting firms start, it's what's your business plan yep. and what's your plan for the next one to three years. Yep. And as those conversations begin, it's it's almost like they're still in a job mentality. Yep. I just work here and I'm, I'm just trying to stay busy. And so if I'm not busy enough, I want more clients, yep. but there's no strategy or long-term objective with it. And so when you ask them to put together a business plan of, what do you want to be offering? If you had a choice of what services you provide rather than I just do what the client asked me to, yeah. um, when they get into that that clarification, it's amazing. Their minds actually open up and all of a sudden they start to have epiphanies and clarities that they didn't have otherwise because no one's asked them this before. Totally agree. And so they come up with these business plans. They get some more clarity as to what they're trying. They have purpose at this point, yeah, right? Yeah. 
And all of a sudden, they've got now a reason to be in business, and they start shifting out of being in that job mentality into an owner mentality, and yeah. they start working on their business. How do we make this more efficient? How do we, how do I make this more profitable? How do I work fewer hours? And these questions didn't exist when they were just working. They were just going to the grindstone and working and working and working, and that was it. Uh, I, so well said. I love what you said. Okay, so here's my next question. You've got your firm, and Zen Accounting is doing well. Tell us about how it got to a point where you were able to sell it. Uh, a lot of people that are listening would love to not just grow their businesses, mm -hmm. but beginning with the end in mind, as you mentioned, maybe an exit strategy is something that they ought to consider. What was yours like? How did it start and how did that go for you? Yeah, so I never had any intention of selling at all. And I think the idea really came about when firms started approaching started approaching me to acquire us and acquire that kind of expertise. You know, we were one of the first on the block to really, you know, implement that more automated model, something that was more scalable, um, something that was really just more geared to the digital age. And, um, you know, there was firms that I think probably like year three starting to get some nibbles, some firms starting to poke around and ask questions and uh, have those conversations about possible acquisitions. And it started intensifying to a point where, you know, I really started thinking about what I wanted to do in life and what, what was next for me. And I had a fork in the road that I had to take at that point. Um, because I'm the kind of personality I have to be all in on something, you know, so I'm either going to mm -hmm. be all in on this uh, with Zen accounting and just continue running it for the rest of my life. Or, you know, I'm going to take the other path where I'm going to go through an acquisition and, um, and then, you know, s start something else. Um, so, uh, you know, it was a really, really, really hard decision, but I ended up getting a good offer that I was very happy with. And, um, you know, had, had other ideas in my mind. And I really liked the initial days of Zen Accounting when I was tinkering with ideas and toying around with business models and really <laughs> trying like that creative stage because yep. at a certain point I had created, yes, there's other things I could accomplish obviously, but, um, you know, it started becoming more like, okay, just growth mode at that point, which wasn't as exciting for me. Um, yeah. so, so that's when I kind of, you know, among other reasons, you know, that's why I decided to pull the trigger and, and go through an acquisition, which was a very interesting process at the end of the day. So, um, one regarding that create creative juice that you've spoken of, what I have found working with owners of businesses, particularly accounting firms and such is that that's the entrepreneur spirit that they tap into. Mm -hmm. And when they get it, it's, it's oftentimes very addictive because yeah. it is creative. Yeah. And oftentimes they get into a business and they have a new idea, something else they want to go do, but the business is so consuming of their time and energy, they can't yeah. go do the next thing. Yeah. And so in this case, the acquisition was ideal because it allowed you to relish the success you've experienced and move on to something new and exciting. So I, I like how you described that. Um, with regards to the acquisition, um, someone looking at an acquisition, what yeah. advice would you have for them? What, what, what did you learn through that experience yep. that you could say, hey, if somebody approaches you and you have the opportunity to be acquired or to acquire someone else, what advice would you give? So I think I bumbled around quite a bit. You know, as I mentioned, there was, you know, a bunch of firms that were looking, that was looking to acquire us at the earlier stages of the business. And I bumbled around, mm -hmm. wasted a lot of time and meetings and then getting to the point about talking about like the financial side of things and what everything would look like. And it kind of fell apart there. So I would fast track that and just be very direct about exactly what you want, which is not Good. always easy to figure out. Right. Like, but you have to understand that first before you actually engage in these discussions. I think like be very, very clear about what you want up front, and that could avoid yes. a lot of wasted time. Good. And with the acquisition, how long were you uh, and needed to stay on after that that acquisition? Uh, it was uh, ended up being less than a year. Good. Very good. All right. Um, so now you've left that, you've had the acquisition, you, you've had that success, you've got that feather in your cap. When did Future Firm start to take some um, shape? Was it before the acquisition was finished? Did you know what you're going into? 
or did you have kind of a period of time of refining, uh, you know, redefining yourself? I knew before because I kind of okay. wanted to know, have an idea of what I was going to do. I didn't just want to sell and not have like a plan afterwards. Good um, job on that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think, you know, I think the real reason why I, I, I probably, or one of the biggest reasons why I sold was because when I was facing that fork in the road, I had to boil down things to my purpose in my professional life. Like, why am I doing what I do? And one of the reasons mm -hmm. why I started Zen Accounting is because I was very frustrated with the profession. And I was frustrated with the lack of innovation and the lack of forward movement. And, you know, the, our professional bodies aren't doing nearly as much as they need to to keep CPAs competitive in the market. And one of the reasons mm -hmm. why I launched Zen Accounting was not just to help small business owners, but also to play a role in helping to move the profession forward. And I think when I was facing that fork in the road, um, I boiled things down to my purpose. And my purpose really was to help the accounting profession and to provide resources. And, you know, when I was launching my firm, I had no one to go to. And I was asking, you know, in Canada that we have CPA Canada, that's our professional body. I was asking them mm -hmm. questions and, you know, they'd point me to like this, they'd point me to like this complicated legislation, which provided no useful <laughs> guidance whatsoever. <laughs> I had no one to turn to. I was totally alone, you know? So I want to help people that are in that kind of position to help them fast track, you know, the design and implementation of a similar kind of firm that I had in place. I love it. So there's a few things I want to mention. One, when I was asking about whether or not Future Firm existed as an idea before the yeah. acquisition was finished, I, I asked that because working with business owners, it's so important to realize that as 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 fulfilling and gratifying as it is to sell the business and actually be paid mm -hmm. for what you created, what people fail to realize is that many successful business owners that sell their companies and leave and have nothing else to then do, they experience a great deal of depression. And mm -hmm. what happens is you're, in, in our culture, self-identity oftentimes comes from what you do as a profession, as a, for a living. Mm -hmm. One of the first questions we're ever asked is, what do you do for a living? And so when a business owner no longer has something that they are doing, their identity oftentimes gets robbed. So uh, you can speak to a number of people that have sold companies even very successfully. Yep. And they'll say within months, six months, nine months, they've played all the golf they can play. <laughs> they've seen all the movies they want to see. They've read all the books they've wanted to read. They've tried traveled to everywhere where they wanted to go. And they're like, I don't have any purpose. Yeah. And so you said the very thing that was important. It was purpose. And you found what that was and you were able to hone in on it and now do this to give back to the, the profession. So I like all of that. So let me just break away at this sure. point then and do a quick mention for our sponsors, just because I think this is very timely because Ryan is making available something here that everyone should take advantage of. It is that newsletter that I mentioned in his bio, where as a listener to today's podcast, you have the opportunity to actually now go and subscribe to Future Firms newsletter. Ryan sends out a weekly newsletter to over 3,000 firm leaders right now who want exclusive tips on tips and tricks on how to design and implement an online scalable firm of their own. So here is something that you can use as a resource that you can go subscribe for. So what I want to encourage you to do is in the podcast description. In this episode's description, we'll provide the link there that you can use to actually get this information. Go there, get that resource, and uh, subscribe. Secondly, Universal Accounting Center is also offering some information here to actually help you work on your business. It is the accountpreneur's journey. It is the turnkey process of starting and building a successful accounting business with all the tools, resources, and things you need to be both confident and competent in the service as you're providing. Go see what you can do to actually start and go on this journey of becoming a counterpreneur to in fact have the premier accounting firm in your area. Now, with all of that being said, Ryan, one of the things that I think is very important here is you've been there, done that. You've obviously accomplished a lot of what you're describing. What is the passion that you've been able to tap into that's really helped you accomplish this? There's definitely some, been some rough times in the path or in the path. So what was the passion that you were really tapping into to give you the, the energy to get through it all? I just like a passion for business. I like uh, technology, innovation, uh, 
interesting business models. You know, I've always been attracted to like the Ubers and the Airbnbs and those kind of models uh, that just change things. Uh-huh. And I think what, what a lot of this was fueled by frustration as well from what I was seeing taking place. And, you know, I just wanted to try something different. So, you know, I don't know if I could properly describe that. I think it's a very good question, but I think, you know, what I mentioned is where it kind of came from. Well, you're definitely a disruptor. I can see that you've, even from an early early age, you wanted to do something different and you wanted to be forward thinking and see how things could be done better. So I like that that's uh, your, your, your tack to things. The passion that I'm hearing you have is that you just want things to be better and you want to be, you, you, you don't settle for this is the only way or the right way. There's got to be a better way to do it. Yep. So I like yep, that. That could be it. Um, there you go. So let, let's talk about future firm. Yeah. Um, what could you tell us about it? If I was just running into you and you were talking about this newsletter and so forth, what could you tell me about future firm? So basically, I'm working with um, I'm working with firms to help them kind of adopt a more modern model. Um, and really, what I want to do is help them fast track. Like I mentioned to you in the in the beginning stages when I started Zen Accounting, I bumbled along, wasted time, wasted money fiddling around with different ideas. There's tons of information online, but really I want to create like a cohesive way on how people could fast track the design and implementation of an online scalable firm and something that not runs their life, something that gives them a balanced life um, lifestyle because I think that's lacking from, hmm. from accounting firms. And I think that's something that you communicated earlier in, in the podcast that that's something that, that you assist with as well, that mindset end of things and just mm-hmm. making sure that people are happy in the business that they run. Cause I run into a lot of firms and they're, you know, firm owners, they're overworked, they're stressed out, they're, you know, have 10 different hats on and they're not really enjoying things. <laughs> and, uh-huh. you know, I want to help be that support resource. And, you know, I do that through uh, one-to-one coaching at the moment with a select group of firms and I have new programs I'll be rolling out, you know, in the very near future. But really it's about just fast tracking the design and implementation of an online scalable firm that helps improve their lifestyle. So that, that's really the gist of it. Love it. Love it. So you said a word that's very interesting. You talked about balance. Yeah. What does balance mean to you? It's different for everyone, um, you know, and that's why I always talk about like start with the end in mind, like, and that's up to the individual to define what balance means for them. Because mm-hmm. for some people, balance is working 20 hours a week, but for other people, you know, it might be working 40 or 50 hours a week, you know, I like, for instance, I actually, I like working. I like what I'm doing right now. You know, I'm having fun with it. So I don't mind working 40 hours a week. I'm okay with that. But I'm also, mm-hmm. I, like I think balance can also mean, you know, having that freedom and flexibility. So if I don't want to work 40 hours a week, some weeks, I could just take, take time off and do 10 hours or 20 hours a week. So I think it has to do with, it's, it's an individual thing. Um, but it, for me, freedom and flexibility certainly plays into that. You know, I, I'm very grateful for the fact that you said balance is different for everyone. Um, The way I usually describe it is, first of all, I say balance is a false narrative that somehow someone is somewhere along the line implied that it exists and it doesn't. Uh, There's a misconstrued idea that balance is achievable. And when in reality, I first start with balance is first understanding that there's a time and a season for all things. And when you can prioritize in your life, what's important now, what's important being who needs you and are you in a good place? And so are you healthy? Are you mentally in a good, positive place? Are you spiritually in a good, positive place? If you can't, if you're not full, you can't give and help anyone else. So you got to be taking care of yourself. But when you're in a marital relationship and you have a spouse, you have children, you have work, you're starting a business, you're going to go through stages where right now your business needs you 60 hours a week. And maybe in a year or two, your kids are going to need you. They're going to need you at the sporting events or possibly something that they're doing as an activity. They need to see you there. Your spouse needs to see you. And so really what I find is balance is defined by time management and time management is before you can dictate, okay, here's how I'm going to allocate the 24 hours in the day that I'm given, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prioritize 
in the future, every week, every Monday, I ought to be doing this, Tuesday this. And as you get into that mind flow of, okay, here's how I'm going to manage my time, then you find balance because you're at peace because you feel as if time is being leveraged in your advantage. You're taking advantage of time, not time is taking advantage of you. And then you feel that Zen moment that I think you're talking about with Zen accounting, that that epiphany yeah. comes where all of a sudden you experience the euphoria of, I'm at peace. And that's balance. Yep. Balance isn't, I do four hours of this, four hours of this, four hours of this, four hours of this. It's 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 the peace of knowing that you're not overwhelmed and you're not uh, overextended, let's say. So I like your answer. So let's replace my answer with your answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I loved it. This is great. So um, you also said another word earlier. You said freedom. What does freedom mean to you? I mean, I think it could be a very simple definition of being able to do what you want, when you want, how you want it, you know? So Thank you. Uh, I yeah. think it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Yeah, freedom. I, I agree. It's where we're in a position where we're not being dictated upon or controlled by some something else. Freedom is that independence. Yep. And I like that. Very good. Okay. Um, let, let me ask a question that I love asking, which is what haven't I asked that I should have asked? Wow. Now you're, that's, that's a tough question. That's probably one of the tougher questions that I've gotten on a podcast. So, um, hmm. <laughs> I don't know, what, Roger. What, to be so quite, let me ask you this. Sure. What 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 is something yeah. that someone does not know about you, but even they would think that they're close to you? I mean, perhaps this is a personality trait, and I'm not sure if we want to go in this direction or not, but I think most people think I'm a very outgoing, uh, extroverted person, but really I'm the complete opposite of that. So uh, I think that's one thing that people are surprised to hear when they learn a bit more about me. But um, I'm not sure if that really answers your question. No, it does. I love it. So some people would refer to that as an introvert versus an extrovert, yep. right? Yep. And some people really are confused by what those terms mean. And oftentimes, an, an accountant is perceived to be someone that's an introvert. Yep. They like working in the corner, leave me alone. I like working with the numbers. The numbers don't change. Two plus two is always four. I like certainty. I like balance. Leave me in this corner. But there are plenty of people that I've met that are accounting professionals that are extroverts. Really, what it what it's defined as that I've learned over the years is an introvert, it, they recharge, they re-energize themselves by being alone. They, they need some quality alone time. An extrovert actually gets their charge, their energy being around other people. They, that's how they fill their bucket. But it doesn't mean an introvert necessarily doesn't like people and doesn't mean that they don't enjoy being with people. And an extrovert, it doesn't mean that they don't that they dislike being alone. It's just how they charge themselves. It's how they get get refilled and energized for the things that are coming up in their lives. Do you do it alone and self-think or do you get with people and power team it? Yeah, so I'm definitely way more on that introverted side of things, though I can uh -huh. play the extrovert card. Uh, yeah. But certainly, I'm I'm more on that introverted side of things, and I think a lot of people that that you know, even you know, people that have worked with me for for years, and when I say now I'm I'm more of that introverted, I like my quiet time, I like to kind of put my head down, work on creative things, have that alone time. They're like, now nah, I would never have expected that. So I think that's one thing that surprises people yeah. that have worked with me. Good. So I'm going to assume you've read a good book lately. What's a good book that you've read? Um, what's the most recent one that I read? Uh, I read, I just finished one called Deep Work, actually, which kind of fits into this whole introverted conversation to a certain extent. It's really about uh -huh. how could you put your head down and actually get really deep into work that requires it. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of distractions in the world and uh, I'm easily distracted for sure. So uh -huh. I want to know how I could be more productive and, and, and just be less distracted. So that, that, was, uh, that was an interesting book. And then another one that I read recently was uh, Seth Godin's uh, This is Marketing. Really, oh. um, I'm probably more of a marketer than an accountant. I probably should have studied marketing instead of accounting, but that's besides the point. Um, and uh, that was a really good on like the very essence of marketing, the fundamentals, the foundation of marketing. So I think those are two things that really just stand out recently. All right. So I'm going to ask you about marketing then. Sure. 
in reading the book, what would you say is a good definition of marketing versus sales? Yeah, I mean, marketing is, uh, I'd say, what you know attracts people to your company, whereas sales is once they're attracted to your company, how do you then turn those uh, prospects into an actual customer or client? So that's probably how I would describe Amen. it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Marketing is what you do to get the potential customer to raise their hand and self-identify, I'm interested, I'm a potential customer. Sales is then the drip, nurture, it's the effort you put forth to educate that person to the point of what you offer that they are now interested in paying you for your product or service. Yep, I'd certainly so, agree with that. There you go. Good. All right. So here's a good question. I'm, I'm, I, I am confident I'm going to be able to get a good answer out of this. All right, you so have I'm going to go for ones, it, right? So I'm a little bit nervous. Yes, this is good. So who is a mentor, someone you would consider to be a mentor to you? Why? And what did you learn from him? So definitely my father, um, you know, okay. because uh, I respect what he did uh, in his uh, professional, uh, professional life. And, uh, you know, again, I didn't have I really didn't have anyone to turn to when I was starting my business. And, um, you know, he, he certainly helped me out and was that sounding board. And, you know, so, um, you know, I think definitely, uh, definitely I learned a lot from him. And, uh, and uh, I think some of that comes through in uh, my business life. What's, what's something you did learn from him? I mean, so much. I mean, a lot of my values probably, I mean, obviously my, my mom has a lot to do that with that as well, but a lot of, uh, a lot of values, just, you know, hard work, persistence, you know, never give up those kinds of things. Good, good. You know, my, my father has passed. And when I look back at my father, he was a very hard working man. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I think I truly took from him was the fact that there is, there is something to be said about taking pride in one's work putting your nose to the grindstone, working hard. And uh, if you work hard, you can be proud of what it is you've done. And, and I got that from my father. My father and my mother, I would, I would add, I, I learned independence. They trusted me. And because of that trust, I felt comfortable going out and trying new things. Yep. I, had, I had from that then the confidence that they had my back. Yep. And as a child, having that confidence to believe I could do whatever I wanted and be happy meant a lot to me because it then I think manifested itself later on in life in other very important ways because that confidence, unless you have it, you've got that, that pathetic self-doubt that creeps in all the time. Yeah. And uh, so often with the coaching that we do, you mentioned coaching, uh, the coaching that I do with my clients, uh, it, it oftentimes can come back to self-doubt. Yep. They they just second guess themselves, yep. and it's like, okay, where is this coming from? You've got a great idea. You've you've done all yep. the research. It looks like you've got an excellent plan to execute here. What's holding you back? And it's nothing more than this pathetic yep. self-doubt that's just holding them back from stepping forward so yeah i like that that was really good and, and look you've been doing i think uh i think i think you mentioned you were doing you've been doing coaching for 20 years or something like that correct me if i'm wrong yeah. you know that was one of the biggest things that i discovered during like becoming a coach is like there's a lot of that that self like, as exactly as you say that self-doubt that you're helping just kind of give them the confidence to move forward, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, that was one thing that kind of surprised me when I got into this kind of role is it's really just helping build up confidence because they already have, they already have the answers. They're just not confident enough to go ahead and, and implement some of those things. So with coaching, what do you feel defines a great coach? You know, I think, an actual definition I might not have for you, but I think some of the things that I've learned is um, making like letting people kind of discover things on their own rather than just oh, good. marking yeah. the answers. And certainly at the yes. beginning, I was just talking, 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 you know, but you have to let people discover things on their own. So I think it's really about asking the right questions and Amen. letting people you know, discover some of these answers, like you can guide them, you can give your opinions as well, but ultimately you should have them figure things out on their own. So that that's perhaps not a definition, a, a good definition oh, no. of coaching, but I think that's an important 
characteristic of it? Well, and, and it's a loaded question because I do have a very strong opinion of this, and I think you you nailed it. Uh, characteristic definition. Um, the, the thing that I think you're describing there is so important. When you look at a great coach, they first of all ask excellent questions. And the purpose of the questions is just as you described it. It's to help the individual come to the conclusion themselves because then it's their idea. Mm -hmm. They own it. They came up with it. And it's easier to implement because they thought of it. Yeah. But the second thing is accountability. A great coach holds people accountable. Mm -hmm. You told me this was important. You said this is what you needed to do. You said this is what you're going to work on next. Where are you with it? Yeah. And when the person can't come back and say, I did this, I did this, I did this, you're really running into a problem because then they're not implementing anything that they've discovered in the last session yeah. and you haven't moved forward. And so the accountability becomes extremely important. So great questions and the accountability. So I think we're on the same page there. So I want to wrap this up. Um, I'm going to come back to you for a final closing thought, but I want to do a recap and at the same time, just do a quick mention of our sponsors again. So for everyone listening, I encourage you to go to the episode description and in the episode description, you'll find this information there for you to take advantage. It is, first of all, your ability to go subscribe to this newsletter that Ryan has for individuals implement, interested in implementing and having that turnkey process to actually build an online virtual accounting business. And this is a great way for you to actually tap into some of those resources that he has. Likewise, Universal Accounting Center is providing to you the accountpreneur's journey, the process to actually start and build your own successful accounting, bookkeeping, and tax business. This journey is to become what's called an accountpreneur. And in doing so, you'll actually get paid what you're worth offering quality accounting services at the same time as offering advanced consultative and advisory services. So with all, that all in mind, understand that with accounting, it is universal. Now, with that, um, let me just do a quick little summary of some of the things that we've discussed with Ryan. Uh, the first and foremost is I think being a disruptor in the accounting world is very, very important. I think we all need to figure out what is unique about the services we're offering and how is it that we're impacting the clients that we serve? What is it that they're experiencing with us that is different than where they would go elsewhere? And in that difference, they're going to find value and more importantly, stick around. You're going to retain them as clients. And so I love that disruptor kind of philosophy of how your firm could be different than everyone else's in the area. The second thing that I thought was very important is he gave us some insights as to growing the business to the point that it want that somebody wanted to acquire it and what that experience was like. And he gave some good advice there, uh, not tiptoeing through the process, but being very clear and deliberate and making a, a clear ask as to what it would take for that acquisition to take place. And then what was added to that discussion is when you do see that end or culmination of your business and you actually sell or transition out of it, you need to have some purpose that you can move into. Otherwise, you're going to run the risk of, yes, celebrating the success and hopefully having a good cash out that would be worth uh, uh, being proud of. But in the, the in coming months or years, if you don't have something else to then fall into and give yourself purpose, you're going to uh, really struggle. And so in his case, Ryan was able to identify that the next step was this this uh, idea of future firm that he's now sharing with us today. Uh, we spoke of coaching. He spoke of his parents and the lessons that he learned from his parents, which I'm sure we can uh, all hopefully uh, find that key individual in our youth that was very influential. It might have been a youth leader, a coach. It might have been a, um, a uh, an advisor, someone, perhaps hopefully our parents that influenced us in a very positive way to help us have the confidence to move forward with our careers like we all have. And then lastly, this whole idea of coaching. Um, if I could say anything, if you want to excel and actually achieve your greatest potential, find a coach, get a coach. You need somebody that can give you outside perspective, someone that can perhaps work as a mentor, in fact, but lastly, hold you accountable. I think too often as accounting professionals running our own businesses, we run into that allure of it's my business and I can procrastinate and do things on my time scale. And honestly, it takes too long to do the things that need to be done. So in that case, getting a coach is an excellent thing. And I'm glad we discussed that. So Ryan, real quickly, any closing thoughts that you have that you'd like to share? 
No, I, I want to just thank you for having me on. I really, uh, really enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed this episode. Um, you had some, some, some tough questions, but some really good questions. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if anyone wants to, um, uh, you know, follow along, um, my newsletter is the best place, and they could just head to uh, www.futurefirm.co/newsletter. And uh, other than that, I really appreciate you having me on, Roger. It was a pleasure. You know, it's it's great to speak with people that are passionate about helping the accounting profession. It's nice that we all have things that we can use to help one another actually excel in our careers and really make this passion that we each have more contagious to the other accounting professionals. So this has been wonderful. So as a final closing thought, let me just invite you. First and foremost, listen to the other episodes that we have. They are committed to, as episodes, give you the tips and tricks and insights that you can use to apply principles in your business to, in fact, build the premier accounting firm. Subscribe to this podcast. And with regards to Universal, if you'd like more information on how you can apply these and other principles in your business to literally work on building your company to have the premier accounting firm in your area, reach out to us here at Universal Accounting Center. You can go to universalaccountingschool.com or give us a phone call at 801-265-3777. And always remember this, if it's about accounting, it is Universal. Take care and have a great day.